Nitan and welcome to my podcast. Today my guest is Vaishnavi Iyengar from New York. She is an electronics and communications engineer and specializes in computer networking and wireless communications. Hi Vaishnavi, welcome to my show. Hi Vedant, thank you for having me on, uh, on your show. I'm excited to have you on my show. So, in my research, I learned that engineering is all about solving problems. I am curious to know what kind of problems do electronics and communications engineers like you solve? Yeah, electronics and communications uh, engineers will uh, solve solve the mysteries of how how you would be able to speak from one location to the other, or how you would be able to send data from one location to to the other. So just to give you an example, uh, this phone call which is happening here, starting from what is on your phone, how uh, how the phone is manufactured, that is one part of electronics, uh, but. Apart from that, how the sound travels from you to me, though we are uh, located in different places, all of that is handled by the communication side of things. What are all the modes of communication? There are different modes of uh, communication. One main uh, main mode which was used up till a uh, few decades back was through physical lines or wired communication. Uh, and that included uh, phones which were connected physically with the wire like landline phones we used to call them landline phones uh, nowadays everything uh, has moved most of the things have moved to what we call as wireless communications which is basically uh, any device that you use can commu- can talk to each other without having to physically connect to uh, to to some to some lines so uh, broadly speaking you would see wired communication wireless communication and all of your other uh, uh, other communication aspects like uh, uh, in there are different ways to send message from one one uh, phone to the other or one person to the other so all of that will either be wired or wireless it's just two big buckets i have a landline phone in india oh that's nice now we are talking on zoom how does my voice and video reach you and yours reach me yeah so when you speak uh, there is there is this uh, aspect called as microphone on the on on any device that you use there'll be uh, what we call as a receiver so any sound waves that are uh, that are coming from the other side are captured by these this microphone what the microphone does is uh, when humans speak we have different languages so we the two of us are speaking in english for example now microphone needs to convert it to a language which the uh, the devices or phones would understand or any any electronic devices which which can be a laptop a phone or uh, anything which is plugged into an electrical connection right so um, the the phone or the receiver should convert it from a human message to any electronic uh, format and a very simple example of electronic format would be uh, if you say hello for example uh, it will it will convert it to 1010 let's say that is just a language which a random language which you don't uh, which you don't uh, listen to uh, from from normal people speaking right no one tells you 1010 they just tell you hello so what the phone is doing is it captures this uh, this voice of yours converts it to this pattern of 10s 10s and then uh, it uses what is called as uh, the wifi all of the wireless devices now use this uh, system called as wifi where you will have you'll have a, another device in the house which will help you uh, send this communication out to the outside world so the other device in the house which is helping you do all of this is called a router and you will probably find it placed in the hall or the room wherever as soon as you go to a new place you set up a wireless connection um home wireless connection someone will come to to your house you, and you can set up what you call as a router so after this is done 
this 1010 packets uh, we call it up as a packet all of this is bundled and it's sent outside to the outside world through uh, a network of connections and these connections can have actual lines um, like wires where the 1010 is sent once everything is sent outside uh, 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 the packet itself will know will have the addresses so it needs to come to me right it shouldn't go to someone else it shouldn't go to my neighbor whatever you're speaking so what happens is when your phone sends something to me it will put some address saying this packet is coming from vedant to vaishnavi so uh, at each at each point whenever these electronic devices read these packets they'll understand where to send it to as the next next uh, uh, next hop or next uh, to the next location and finally uh, since we have both the address and this 1010 pattern it will come to my phone what my phone does is the reverse of what your phone does right um, it converted english to an electronics language what my phone now does is it will take all of this information it will convert it back from electronics to uh, a human uh, uh, language uh, by by doing exactly opposite of what your phone does how does a fax machine work so fax machine uh, has been used really uh, uh, really long back and again this works in a very similar format any electronics that you see will use this uh, whole pattern of 1010 which i'm talking about so it's either an on or a off what a fax machine you can see it as a just a different kind of sender and receiver so instead of uh, uh, of a microphone which converts a sound wave to 10s 10s fax machine will have uh, will will receive the documents in a different way and then it will uh, it will convert convert the same a different language or a different document in into 10s 10s after this is done there is a again electrical connection uh which goes to the fax machine the same uh, uh with this electrical connection uh, it is sent from one one hop to the other and when the other person receives it it's again converted back from the 1010 format to a human readable format so uh everything the basis is everything works in a similar fashion where one one information uh is is converted to a series of ones and zeros and then the other uh, location uh, just converts it back from ones and zeros to uh, to something which human human beings would understand so you're saying that in phones it's converted to human listenable things and in a fax machine it's converted converted to human readable things correct that is the difference and uh, one more important uh, difference is the ad addressing itself right so uh, in in a fax machine what happens is the sender would uh, would put in a fax number or dials the fax number so now the fax machine knows that this should go to vaishnavi and not vaishnavi's neighbor uh what happens in other uh, wireless devices uh, for example zoom was your question right so what happens over zoom is um, i'm not dialing i i am dialing in your connection and we are getting connected in the initial connection and any other packets what what zoom uh, or your phone will do is it will take an address uh, of my phone it will take another address which needs to go to you and then it will it will just put it inside the packet but in a fax machine all of this address is initially dialed in by the person sending it uh, once it reaches the other side you will get back a image file or a document or something which is in a readable format how does the internet work so this is a great question um so though you see internet being used everywhere you don't actually see it uh, working right so it's a great question um internet on internet is called uh, why why first of all why is it called an internet because there are multiple machines so you will have a uh, few phones in your house and three four lap or or three four laptops in your community and then i'll have some phones laptops in my office so all of these are connected to each other think of it 
uh, like a spider web right so each computer uh, which has uh, an internet connection as we call it uh, as soon as you get an internet connection on any of your laptop or phones or any devices they'll all get connected to a central web like connection and um, any uh, any information originating from one of these devices will then get sent to any the other device on the same network so uh, if you start from one side of the the si uh, one side of the web if you start walking on the web somehow you are you have the ability to walk on this spider web right so if you start on one side if you want to reach the other side you can just use the whole web network and go from one point to the other so this whole a uh, spider web is called as the internet i have heard people saying this let me find this on the internet when you actually go to google or some some uh, when you say let me find this on the internet what you're trying to do is um, you're trying to ask other computers or other phones on the same uh, web if they have the answer so now on your laptop uh, you won't find all the answers correct you don't have Mm -hmm. uh, uh so let's say you want to know about uh, a new book which got released you don't have information on your laptop now you but you want to find out uh, i want to find this book without having to go to the library as of today right what you do is you go to google you put a search term now what happens is uh, wifi will help you send this information out of your laptop it will help you in the communication outside to the outside world and any computer connected to this same web called as internet will be able to read your uh, uh, read your question and whichever computer has the answer uh, they will be able to reply back to you saying hey this is the new book which got released so uh, when you type in google saying what is the new book which got released you are asking google's server uh server is the place where all of this information about the new book is stored you're asking the google server if there is any information and if google server has the information it will tell you uh hey i have this information or i know another person who has this information and i'm just sending it over to you so that's what happens when you try to find something online when we dial a number in a phone how does the signal know where the phone is and connect to it yeah so when uh, when you dial a number there are different locations in the world which are called as internet exchange points or not even internet exchange they just call it exchanges in uh, phone exchange points uh, when you dial uh, the number again it will uh, convert it to that 1010 format which i was talking about uh, all of this gets sent uh, outside from all of these lines going outside of your house correct all of the communication lines uh, once it reaches a central uh, location called as internet exchange or an exchange location they will have a map of um, of all the uh, addresses so they will know for example uh, Uh, an address of uh, a b c d e f belongs to vedant so when you dial in um, a, a number that they will re they'll see the number uh, at the internet exchanges and then there uh, a mapping will happen to which which person this should go to and uh, just to go into a little bit more detail here if you would like uh, mm -hmm. do you like me to just uh, just tell you about the actual addresses sure yeah so what happens is each uh, device any physical device uh, when the company manufactures the phone or the laptop they'll put an address onto the onto the device itself they will write it on the device and that is called as the physical address of the device uh, and when you connect to the internet when you get a wifi connection home when you uh, when you get the phone company to get you a connection uh, what happens is your phone will get what we call as an ip address so there are two addresses uh, now as soon as you dial a number what happens is this phone knows that uh, uh, information so if it's over the internet what happens is all of the dialing that you do uh, has the the actual number that you dial the uh, when you're sending you will also tell this is my uh, my address my ip address and i want to reach out to you and there are different uh, places uh, in in the world where 
uh, they can map one address to one person and in the world there'll only be uh, one address to one person uh, always so that you don't reach uh, uh, so that your information doesn't reach some random wrong person and um, on a wired phone what happens is all of this happens on a line so when you pick up your landline phone dial it it all of the numbers the beeps will get converted to 1010 they go to the exchange point exchange point will have a uh, a location uh, an address book and then they will take this and then send it to different locations of the world um, back uh, i think back in like 60 years back or 50 years back they used to ha- they used to also be actual people doing this connections so there used to be someone sitting in the exchange point and then picking this up and connecting with an actual wire but to nowadays it doesn't happen all of this happens automatically uh, using uh, using computers how has the mobile phone industry changed in the past years so from what i have seen mobile phone industry in general has cha- has gone more from uh, 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 more from a, a very uh, bulky technology to what we call as the light light technology so initially uh, maybe 20 years back when you bought a, a cell phone first of all you wouldn't have a lot of applications running on it uh it was it was designed in a different way uh the the phone actually used to be more heavier uh because they had to uh, fit in a lot of components into the phone uh, to make it make it work uh over the past uh, uh years what has happened is all of the different phone companies mobile phone companies have worked on getting all of this uh, all of these components to a very uh, to to a very tiny space so something which took took a lot of space now takes lesser space but does does more functions than what it used to do so all of this is also part of the electronics engineering uh, uh part where they keep every day they keep trying to find out how can we reduce the uh, amount of space uh, this this phone occupies but still make it do the same function or more functions so that is from a uh from a phone manufacturing standpoint uh from a software standpoint what happens is the phone also needs uh some kind of applications to run right so initially there were very few applications very few companies doing it and over the years uh now more and more companies have joined in to create all of these uh uh these uh the software which goes on to the phone and there are lot more applications you have you have an application to find where your uh, where your bus is you have uh, applications to find uh, uh what what is the uh, price of something you can order online so a uh, lot of development has happened in that um, another thing uh, which has changed in terms of phone is um, initially they were um, they were using uh, they were slower in terms of communication so uh, when you went to the internet you started to find something it would take uh, let's say 2 minutes for you to get get the information because there has been a lot of advancement in the field of uh, mobile phone development and in field of uh, wireless communication and communications in general now whatever used to take 2 minutes will probably take you a few seconds so that is another major difference which i see from uh, phones back then and phones now when we press a button on the phone how does the phone know which letter or number has been pressed yeah so each letter uh, is uh, like i said big, there is human language and there is electronics language so in electronics language each and every letter that you press uh, uh, will have a different uh, different language uh, map to it so when you press a a will have will will be a different language on the electronics uh, uh, on any electronic device and the most commonly used uh, format is what we call call as the ascii code a s c i i code uh, that stands for american standard code for information interchange uh, what happens here is every character uh, that you type will be converted to uh, to a series of ones and zeros a series of numbers 
so uh, just to just to give one uh, uh, one example right so when you hit backspace on your on your uh, keyboard it will uh, it will get converted to let's say 010 but when you hit a it will get converted to 012 so it will just convert get converted to different numbers so think of it as a code code word game uh, where human language is just converted to different languages so uh, ultimately as in when you start typing different numbers different letters all of this conversion happens and then the computer behind knows the electronic component will know that this is what was sent what happens if you just type 012 using the numbers on your keyboard does it automatically translate to a this is a great question and and uh in fact uh, uh, it, it's uh, i it, it's it's amazing because uh, you would think that 012 because because a is 012 012 should convert to a but uh, the thing is uh, zero itself on your keyboard will have some other number mapping on the back uh, on the back uh, back end which is basically um so if you type in let's say any number on your laptop it will again convert it to a different number on the back end so what happens is when you type 012 it is not converting it to a because that is human language what it will do is 012 will be converted to a, a series of zeros and ones on the on the back end so ascii code will not have a mapping just uh, so though ascii code has a mapping for uh, letters uh, and and everything numbers will also have a mapping even in that so when you type 2 it will it will send 002 on the back end it will not convert it to a just because you typed in 012 wow that super duper complex what motivated you to be an electronics and communications engineer as a child what did you want to be so as a child i wanted to be like lot of things right uh, so different different thing uh, different things were uh, very, i i was very curious about different things around me uh, some of the some of the things i wanted to do was uh, uh, be a uh, be a doctor or uh, uh be a performer on the stage uh be an engineer so there were a lot of things to choose from uh and when i went to college i started uh reading different subjects and seeing how how different things work and that was the time when a lot of a uh, lot of uh, enhancements lot of imp- uh research was going on in terms of how people are speaking from uh, people are speaking to each other so there was a big change happening uh from just a very traditional uh, uh traditional communications where people were just using wires to a completely different form of communication where uh when i was in high school i saw a lot more people buy laptops buy phones uh mobile phones in in college so that kind of interested me need to take up this take this up as a subject going for what are your hobbies my main hobby is uh, singing so whenever i get a chance i uh, try to listen to music i sing even i like singing yes i've heard you sing and i love the way you sing <laughs> thank you Can you sing a little of your favorite song to me and my audience? Yes, for sure. I can sing uh, because I have learned classical music. I can sing sing three four lines of uh, uh, a classical song, which which was done, uh, which which I really like because these were one. This was one of the song which I heard a lot while growing up. So I can sing that if you like. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Mm. Krishna ni begane baro. Krishna ni begane baro. Begane baro. Mukhavanu toro. 
ಬೇಗನೆ ಬಾರೋ ಮುಖವನ್ನು ತೋರೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ನೀ ಬೇಗನೆ ಬಾರೋ ವಾವ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೇದಾಂತ್ Thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you. I enjoyed being here. Dear listeners, follow my Facebook page Curious Vedant to get updates on the upcoming episodes. To listen at leisure on your phone and get notified about future episodes, subscribe by searching for Curious Vedant wherever you get your podcast such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can also listen to my show on vedan.buspro.com. Thank you for listening to Curious Vedan. And don't forget to rate and leave comments. <laughs>